God loves the world so much. And, 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 and Jesus prayed for those who were mocking him on the cross, folks. That's the beautiful thing. Jesus, Jesus prayed for the, for the people that were crucifying him. That's the beautiful thing. Where did the story of the great flood come from? Folks, the Bible says you are a slave to whatever controls you. You are a slave to sin. But the scriptures declare that we are all prisoners of sin. So we receive God's promise of freedom only by believing in Jesus. Folks, you need to be born again. The Bible says this, everyone who sins is breaking God's law for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sin and there's no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who continues to sin does not know him or understand who he is. It says, dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning, because God's life is in them, so they can't keep on sinning, folks. So it says, now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously does not belong to God. Are you living righteously? Do you even know what that means, folks? If you claim to be a Christian and yet you, are by Monday, you are in your sin, you are lusty looking at pornography, you are committing adultery, if you're still a homosexual, you need to turn from it. You will die in your sin, folks. Don't give Jesus lip service. That's what he meant. That's what Jesus says. No one that puts the hand to the plow and turns around is worthy of my kingdom. When you come to Jesus, you're saying no to this world. You're saying no to the flesh. You're saying no to the sin that so easily entangles us. And you come to Jesus Christ. And he will give you the power to live for him. He will give you the power. Here's how blessed Jesus is. That he was praying for his enemies. Those who were laughing at him and mocking him on the cross. He's saying, if you are the son of God, you come down from that cross. Yet Jesus Christ was dying for those mockers. Jesus Christ was dying for those who were mocking. He prayed for them. He said, Father, forgive them for they do, not what, they do not know what they're doing. But folks, now you do know what you're doing. You no longer have an excuse. If you hear the gospel that Jesus Christ died and he defeated the power of death over, the power of sin over you on that cross, and he's called you to live a holy life, don't give Jesus lip service. Folks, you're not fine. You're not going to enjoy the pleasures of this world. You're going to face a holy God, and he's going to give you exactly what you deserve. And folks, we all deserve the wrath of God. We all deserve hell. But by His grace and mercy, He sent Jesus Christ to die upon that cross to take the punishment that you and I deserved. And Jesus Christ proved His love. The Bible says, while you are yes sinners, Christ died for you. Folks, Jesus Christ laid down His life and rose again on the third day. While we are yes sinners, when we were sinning against Him, He laid down. That was His love. And most people say, oh yeah, yeah, I love Jesus. No, if you still stay in your sin, it means you hate Jesus. You truly do. If, you, if you're if you sinning against Jesus, you hate Him. You don't love Him. That's why Jesus says, these people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You might say, I'm a Christian. But if you love to fornicate, okay? If you love to lie, if you love to commit adultery, Jesus says, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You do not belong to Christ. You cannot. You hate God. You hate Him. Folks, the Bible says actually that you're an enemy of God in your mind through your wicked works. And that's who you are, folks. But Jesus Christ died for his enemies. He died for you. He took up that cross that we, you and I deserved and rose again on the third day. He defeated that because he's holy. Jesus Christ is holy. And the Bible says you will not let your holy one rot in the grave. He will lay down his life. Don't put this off, folks. Tomorrow may never come. You'll end up in this in this place of torment before you know it. Don't think you're fine. You're going to go to hell, folks, unless you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He died to prove it. His love was demonstrated on the cross. While we were, yes, sinners, Christ died for you. Christ laid down his life. He calls you to live a holy life. He says, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. God will make you holy. He will. He has the power. He has the power to save you from your, from your sin and from death. And he has the power to make you holy, to change your life, to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Not for the things of this world. And, and, and Second Peter says this, You are a slave to whatever controls you. And when people escape from the wickedness of this world, by knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and get tangled up and enslaved by sin again, they are worse off than before. It would be better if they had never known the way to righteousness than to know it and to reject the command they were given to live a holy life. They proved the truth of this Proverbs. A dog returns to the vomit, and another one says a washed pig returns to the mud. So many people come to Christ, and they say, yeah, God loves me, but they don't understand the love of God. The love of God ought to repel you to live for Him, to put away your sins, folks. If, he, if Jesus Christ laid on His life for sinners, and the Bible says this, He died to defeat the power of death and sin over us, then how can you continue to live in sin? How can you continue to live for this world? To please the flesh. Folks, the Bible says if you continue to live for the flesh, you will die. But by this power of the Holy Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. She says, unless you're willing to forgive others, God will not forgive you. Folks, if you're harboring anger in your heart, you're not a Christian. You don't belong to God. If you're if you're harboring unforgiveness, you do not belong to God. The Bible is clear. If you're, if you're looking at women to lust after them, you do not belong to God. That's clear. The Bible is making it clear. Jesus is making it clear. He's, he's the one that we need to listen to. Don't listen to your own ideas. Some of these fake pastors that say you can stay in your sin and still see God. No, you cannot. The Bible says that God will punish sin wherever it's found. You must repent, the Bible says. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Cry out for His mercy and He will forgive your sins. And grant you the gift of everlasting life. You will know Him. But you know what's beautiful? That God can cleanse you from your sin. God will have mercy on you if you come to Him. Come to Him humbly. Don't say, I'm a Christian. Don't say, I don't want to sin. Come to Him and confess your sin. And Jesus is merciful. He will forgive you of your sin. And He will grant you the gift of everlasting life. And I hear this, oh, I'm a Christian. And I still sin? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You don't know Jesus, the one who died for your sin, who, who came to free you from your sin. The Bible says if you're still in your sin, if you live in your sin, you will die in your sin. You're going to hell, folks. The Bible is clear on that. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law. For all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sin, and there's no sin in Him. Has Jesus taken away your sin? There's no sin in Him, the Bible says. Anyone who continues to live in Him will not sin. But anyone who keeps on sinning does not know Him or understand who He is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to, the, came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning, because God's life is in them, so they can't keep on sinning, they are, because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Where is your religion based out of? Where do you, where out of the Bible, right yeah, here. Where does the Bible come from? from God himself. In Mesopotamia, look it up. Uh, every, look it up, it says, the Bible says this. Every story in there comes from Mesopotamia. What sin are you in? Jesus can deliver you. He loved you so much. Jesus shed his innocent blood for you, so you, you know don't what? have to die. And you know what? Jesus loved you, you know so much. What? The Bible says Jesus you loves you while you were yet sinners. So blessed. You can I am blessed because Jesus else. Christ, take and I, I want you to live too. Else. I want you to live too. And I don't want you to end up in hell. It's a horrible place. Hell is a horrible place, folks. It's such a horrible place. It truly is. But Jesus says this is the most loving person that's ever walked this earth. He says it's a place yeah, yeah. where the worm never dies and the fire wait, of hell is never wait, quenched. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. But the basis for your religion comes from where? From the Bible. Yeah, where does the Bible come from? Jesus himself. He said it. No, 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 no. These are my no. words. How many, red, look, how many times Red letter words wait, wait, from wait, wait, Jesus. Wait, wait, wait. How many times has that been reinterpreted from different languages? You're mistaken. You think that God cannot... You think that God cannot sustain no, no, his own no, no, word. No, 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 no. God, wait, wait, God no, can sustain no, His word wait, just wait, as I'm He can sorry, sustain I'm the, the. I'm sorry, breath. I can't hear. What was the answer to the question? God can sustain How His word no, 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 no. just as He sustains wait. every breath that comes oh, from your mouth. You oh, cannot wait, stop reading. Wait, you cannot wait, stop thinking. Wait, you didn't answer you, the question because you don't know. I hey, Jesus Christ died for you. He loved you so much. You can't even God loves your the world so much, you and 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 Jesus prayed for those who were mocking Him on the cross, folks. That's the beautiful thing. Jesus, Jesus prayed for the for the people that were crucifying Him. That's the beautiful thing. From God, it, it's not a story. It's a true fact. Look it up in the. Look it up in the. I call it. Go, go look it up. And take it up. You'll you know find. If you, you will find studied, causes. If you haven't studied other religions, you can't even begin to know the depth of yours. Jesus didn't need to study other religions. Jesus says this: Whoever the Son says free is free indeed. Then, then you can Jesus will no, say you free. He you will. Can, no, you he loves you. you can, I love you. No, you don't. I do. You can remain an ignorant fool. Thank you. You cannot understand the depth of your own religion without branching out and discovering where it came from. Hey, you can't even 
set free from my you sins. Even, That's a beautiful begin, thing. You can't even begin Jesus to Jesus will set you free. That's you an amazing can't thing. Understand that. He will set you free. He will don't, get you. Don't he will, you don't he will call you a daughter. Don't preach what you don't it understand. Don't preach Jesus what you Jesus will set you free, folks. Don't preach what See, you don't understand. Don't preach you what hate you don't understand. Don't you hate preach, God because you love your sin, the Bible says. Don't preach what you don't understand. But Jesus prayed for you. Don't preach what you don't understand. Don't Jesus preach says, what you Father, don't forgive them for they do don't not know what they're doing. What you don't understand. And Jesus don't loves you so much. What you he lied don't on his life. He, sh- he don't shed his innocent blood. What you don't Jesus, understand. Don't preach Jesus what you shed don't his understand. innocent blood don't for you folks. Preach where you don't he died understand. upon that cross. Don't preach what you don't and he laid understand. down his life. Don't preach what Jesus you don't understand. Jesus laid down his life for you. He did. Don't preach what you don't understand. Thank you. Don't preach what you don't understand. Jesus Christ laid down his don't life. Preach what you don't he came understand. to defeat the works of the don't devil. Preach what you don't Jesus understand. came to defeat the works don't of the devil. Those who have understand. trust in Jesus Christ will be don't set free. Pre- Jesus says, whoever no. the Son says free is no. free indeed. He will give don't. you freedom from your don't. sin. Don't preach what he you don't will understand. free you from death don't and decay. You don't understand. And Jesus don't will say you free. You don't understand. And don't will, preach what you don't understand. And the, the marvelous don't grace of God that you can mock him all day long like this lady does. You can mock Jesus and he can still. Jesus still offers her. I'm not mocking life. anybody. I am not mocking anybody. I Jesus want to know if you know where you comes from. Do you I know told you where it came from. from. From the you word don't. of God. You want me to show you? you? Don't. I'll show you. you. Don't. you don't. I'll show you. First Timothy. Listen to what it says. Where does, where does first let me, Timothy let me show you. From? Where did this he, book he come from? He tells you. Where did can this can book I tell you? You don't want me to answer? Jesus. This is the very word of God. God breathed. Jesus says this. The very word of God came from pagan. The very word of God came from pagan. It's Jesus says, my very word is spirit and truth. This very word, Jesus said. Mesopotamia. And people the are angry. Of your Bible and Jesus, came from Mesopotamia. See, Satan is angry when he hears no, the word of God being preached. Not. Jesus, no, but not. Jesus came to set the captives free. You know what, he loves are? you. He loves this they lady here. She still loves her. She's them. angry, but Why Jesus. Are you pushing it? Why Jesus says he came it? to set her free. You know what? He also doesn't He came to deliver you from her anger. Jesus will set you free. He also doesn't push it. Yes, he didn't. He doesn't. No, he doesn't push you are. So I'm not pushing it on you. I'm just telling you that God loves you. I'm not beating you. I'm just telling you God loves you. I'm just telling you that God loves you. I'm just telling everybody else. I want everybody to know. I wanted to. 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 I wanted to
If I said otherwise, I would be as great a liar as you, but I do know him and obey him. Yes, you see, people claim to know God, but Jesus says they don't even know him because to know him is to obey him, the Bible. This is what we're also told in 1 John. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. This is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. There are many people that claim to know God, but they don't obey God's word. What they do instead is find ways to get around it. The people that were arguing with Jesus back in John 8 believed very much that they knew God because they were descendants of Abraham. They were Christians. But look what Jesus says to them in verse 37. Yes, I realize that you were descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because there is no room in your hearts for my message, for my word. Christian or not, you tell a sin-loving person that divorce and remarriage is adultery unless adultery has already been committed, or that they must forgive or God will not forgive them, or that if they're greedy or drunkards or sexual immoral or homosexual, that they are heading for hell and you may get a reaction like you see here. By the way, you can see the full video. I'll put a link in the description below. But most people may take the promises of the Bible, but then they reject the commands that Jesus gives us. And so they choose what they like and discard the rest. Look down to verse 47. Anyone who belongs to God listens gladly to the word of God, but you don't listen because you don't belong to God. Friend, make sure this is not speaking about you. Jesus told Isaiah the prophet about this, and it's still being fulfilled today. This is what Jesus said about that in Matthew 13. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, When you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of these people are hardened, and their ears cannot hear, and they have closed their eyes, so their eyes cannot see, and their ears cannot hear, and their hearts cannot understand, and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Friend, blessed indeed are the eyes that see and the ears that hear. Isaiah the prophet also spoke about this, and we are told what it meant in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God, His plan that was previously hidden, even though He made it for our ultimate glory before the world began. But the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. This is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit, for His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. When Isaiah the prophet said, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him, he was not prophesying about streets of gold in heaven, but about the gospel message that Jesus would suffer and die and rise again on the third day to save us from our sins, from hell, and to bring us into His glory. First Peter also tells us about this very thing. This salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this glorious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when He told them in advance about Christ's suffering and His great glory afterwards. They were told that their messages were not for themselves but for you, and now this good news has been announced to you by those who preach in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. So friend, I encourage you to pay close attention to this message and thank you for listening.